Hello, and welcome to this week's Barnes Takeout, your weekly serving of art from the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia. I'm Bill Perthes, Bernard C. Watson, Director of Adult Education, and today I take you to Gallery 18 on the second floor on the west side of the collection, and we're looking east at this ensemble that's anchored by this remarkable uh, Pennsylvania German chest, which a colleague of mine, Robin Crerin, has talked about in an earlier uh, takeout, and I encourage you to, uh, to look that up. It's an ensemble that um, demonstrates works from uh, Amadeo Modigliani, um, Henri Matisse. We have these sort of typical in the collection uh, pieces of ironwork. Uh, just to our left, if we could see it, is uh, the aesthetic by Pablo Picasso. But the work I'd like to focus on today is right over here. To our right on the second row. It's this picture, and it's by the American artist Charles Demuth, painted in 1919, called Piano Movers Holiday. Um, Demuth was born in uh, 1883 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, uh, just a little more than 70 miles uh, west of Philadelphia. So he's a, a local painter. Um, it, although he traveled a lot, Lancaster was very much his his home base, um, and uh, he often re returned there. And it's possible that this subject is uh, drawn from from Lancaster itself. Um, I'll say a bit more about the sort of enigmatic nature of the of the, uh, the subject in a second. Um, but also, uh, and I, I've addressed a couple works by Demuth already, but um, Demuth and our founder, Albert Barnes, were close personal friends. And this picture uh, demonstrates it as he, uh, as Dr. Barnes uh, acquired it directly from uh, Charles Demuth. So the, the picture really focuses on the planes created by facades and roofs of the buildings, as well as the angular intersection of sides of chimneys. So these chimneys here, the angular um, uh, sides of those chimneys, and then over and through, between and across, we have these diagonal prismatic shards that radiate from the top of the of the image and uh, have the effect of um, almost like beams of light uh, that sort of cut through the through the image. Um, so there's a couple effects that this has. First of all, the abundance of geometric shapes, the extra, strongly linear, and the planes tend to be either vertical or horizontal. So verticality in the uh, in the chimneys and the smokestacks, or this band here that's a kind of mast, or horizontal, as is emphasized by the intersection of the facades with the roofs, and then interspersed with these and carrying on the very the strong geometric shape are uh, the inclusion of these uh, rectangular windows, rectangular windows on um, several of the fa facades. And these are only s slightly um, varied with one sort of very delicate area over to the right that has a more curvilinear quality and reads as perhaps smoke coming out of a uh, out of a distant uh, smokestack. Uh, but otherwise it's it's strongly linear and strongly, um, vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. Um, and the effect, uh, particularly of these diagonal prismatic shards, is quite remarkable. Um, as they, as I suggested, as they come over top or sometimes between or behind, as this one seems to do, seems to go behind this, this chimney, it affects the plane and the spatial location of aspects of that of that plane. So for instance, if we look at this area here in this facade in the back, the, the angular 
shard comes across. And as it does, these areas, like this one here, seems to lift off of the plane of the, of the building, of the facade of the building, and come forward. Not quite as far forward as this band that you'll see more or less establishes the foreground, um, but certainly more far more forward than the the plane of the facade itself. And the effect of that is that as our eye moves across the picture, it's pulled in and out of the picture space. So even if we just go across a small area like this, we go from the sort of middle background to the immediate foreground, back to that uh, background, and then a kind of midway, and then back again, and then again a kind of midway. So uh, we're moving very abruptly in and out of space. As I mentioned, this uh, picture is painted in uh, 1919, and it's really just as Demuth is uh, resolving his mature visual language, um, what will come to be called precisionism. And in the development of that, uh, Demuth draws on his very intimate knowledge of both the traditions of art as well as more current developments. Um, from the sort of traditions of art, this picture is very much informed with uh, Demuth's deep understanding of the watercolors of Paul Cezanne. Uh, in Gallery 20, we have the juxtaposition of Demuth watercolors with Cezanne watercolors, just to demonstrate that point. And in an earlier takeout, I talked about, about one of those. Um, so, and what is it about Cezanne that we see coming out here? One is the abundant use of white, which in the in Dima's watercolors would be the paper on which he's painting. In this case, he's painting on board, so it's a primed surface, but he's allowing a lot of that primed board. So this white that we see really encircling the composition is uh, is that that open support. The other is a very judicious use of color. Um, oftentimes in, in these pictures, creating an, um, a sense of opaqueness, so there's a, there's a solidness to the color, but also, as we look up in the, what we read as a kind of sky area, very delicate, translucent and transparent colors. So if you look at the variety of colors that come in, uh, in this area here, as we move from delicate blues to grays to pinks or are sort of peach colors, uh, and oftentimes they're they're even intermixed with with each other. Um, I probably don't have to mention that the more current uh, development that say, that Demuth is also drawing on is the cubism the the cubism of Pablo Picasso and George Brock in particular. Uh, they're the sort of early phase of cubism called analytic cubism. But unlike the that analytic cubism of Picasso and Brock, where a subject is uh, broken down into small planes that are sort of scattered across a picture, um, but never seem to sort of recombine or coalesce back into a subject. It always remains uh, very, very shattered. Um, Demoth's subject remains apparent, right? We, we continue to see the, the building aspects and the architectural elements of it. Um, but again, something that uh, Demoth is drawing from that, and indeed that the Cubists themselves drew from Cezanne, is the very, the focus on this architectural nature. And we see this coming out in uh, Cezanne's architectural landscapes, for instance, something that Picasso and, and Brock uh, turned to as they were beginning to develop Cubism. But what we see in Demuth is not a repetition of either of those, but rather a unique and individual synthesis of aspects of all of those, of both Cezanne's watercolors as well as Cubist ideas. And it was this development that really distinguished um, Demuth as an artist in, in his own right, and really established, as I suggested, his own, uh, or clarified his own uh, visual language. 
Um, as I suggested earlier, the subject could have been from Lancaster, the sort of industrialized aspect of Lancaster, though in 1919, um, Demuth also spent time in Gloucester, Gloucester uh, Massachusetts, uh, so it could also have been drawn from his experience there. And the mast-like quality of this of this unit, e even the kind of um, uh, sail-like quality that these angular prismatic forms shape, are suggested of this. It might also very likely be a combination of, of both instances or both experiences. So what about the what about the title, Piano Movers Holiday? Um, Demuth was uh, was very often fond of adding or attaching um, poetic or enigmatic titles to his to his pictures. Uh, a later picture um, that uh, the subject of which is a grain elevator in Lancaster, he called My Egypt, a very evocative title. Um, Demuth had a deep interest in literature, so naming a picture gave him a way of sort of fusing his interest both in the visual arts as well as in the language arts. Um, and in some ways, it's probably the case with, with this picture. And we have some evidence in the archives of that. Um, in a transcription uh, by uh, Dr. Barnes' associate, Nell Mullins, um, we have a kind of poem that was uh, transcribed uh, from Demuth himself that contain uh, titles of other paintings that Demuth made around the same time. And I'll read this to you just to get a sense of uh, both his Demuth's playfulness, as well as, again, the kind of evocative qualities of his, of his titles. Um, it goes like this, Piano Movers Holiday, the sky after El Greco, pyramids in Amethyst, in Provincetown number seven, the rise of the prism in Province number one, for W. Car Carlos W., chimneys, ventilators, or whatever, and this was recorded on August 4th, 1921, from Charles Demuth. Um, several of these, uh, the sky after El Greco, uh, the province, uh, in the province, number seven and number one, and for W. Carlos W., which refers to the American poet William Carlos Williams, these are all titles of other uh, works by, by Demuth. And uh, the this line that reads pyramids in amethyst very much again connect to to this picture in the way that these angles create these angular units create a kind of pyramid shape um, oftentimes that seems to act as a canopy over the picture but here as I suggested really cuts through and between many of the other pictorial uh, pictorial elements um, so again, this is a work that I think has has multiple visual levels as well as its title sort of extending uh, its suggestiveness beyond that. Um, so I hope that, that you'll take the opportunity to uh, come to Gallery 18 um, and look at these works by uh, by Charles Demuth. We're fortunate to have many works by him throughout the collection, uh, several of them. Many of them are small. But these are of an of a good size and give you an opportunity to really explore uh, this mature language of Charles Demuth. So join us next week for another edition of Barnes Takeout, and uh, please leave us a comment. We're always very interested to hear your feedback um, and your your ideas about uh, these weekly offerings from the Barnes Foundation. Until then, thanks and goodbye. I'm Tom Collins. Neubauer Family, Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.